Thank you, Deputy Chair, and it's uh, with pleasure that I rise to uh, join with my colleagues in support of the motion before the House today from the member for Dawson, uh, which is really acknowledging the extraordinary work of uh, veterans counselling services and indeed uh, celebrating the recent transition from uh, what was known as the Vietnam Veterans Families Counselling Service and now referred to as the Open Arms Veterans and Families Counselling Service. This is, uh, as many of my colleagues have spoken, a, a terrific move. I think that uh, of all the veterans I've uh, known throughout my life, I can't imagine anybody not supporting the opening up of the fantastic um, services that can, that can be provided through the counselling services to a broader range of uh, serving and ex-serving personnel from any uh, theatre of war, regardless of the particular conflict or indeed whether or not their um, trauma is conflict or service. Um, result of conflict or service. I think the really key elements of uh, many of the colleagues before me have spoken of the history of uh, the setting up and the, the instrumental role that the Vietnam veterans played in those early formative years of establishing the counselling service. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I'm the daughter of a Vietnam veteran and remember very well my father uh, going to Vietnam and indeed returning and it was Many, many, many years passed before my father needed to access those counselling services and indeed um, our family. I am one of 27,000 uh, people who participated in the Vietnam Veterans Family Study that really tried to shed some light on what the intergenerational impacts of deployment and war are, not on just the serving veterans but indeed family units uh, as a whole. So, the um, proposal that these counselling services should be opened up to accommodate as many uh, people impacted by uh, deployment life, uh, I think is something that we all support on uh, both sides of the House. Indeed, um, I think the, uh, we know, we have horrifying statistics around uh, suicide for ex-service uh, personnel. We also have some particularly uh, disturbing um, you know, evidence around um, the ongoing impacts of post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. And I think that this is, um, part, this is a legacy that Open Arms will um, you know, really be able to, that the legacy left by the Vietnam Veterans Counseling Services in those um, two areas in particular in suicide prevention and uh, indeed the uh, treatment of PTSD uh, is something that the Open Arms organisation will be able to hopefully expand on and indeed deliver even better, more improved services to more people. There's always been greater demand than there has been services and resources, we know that, and anything we can do to address that is uh, absolutely worth supporting in my view. And open arms, as I said, will be a lasting legacy of the Vietnam veterans who identified from day one the psychological impacts of war and also uh, military service itself, which these impacts often last decades, um, well after those physical wounds have healed. So I would like to take this opportunity to uh, really give thanks and uh, praise where it's very much due to many of the people in my community who just give um, so much of themselves in uh, ways to support uh, both serving and ex-serving personnel in the Newcastle region. And I think um, first and foremost of Mr Stephen Finney and uh, Ken Fay, who were both involved in uh, various ex-service organisations, including the Newcastle RSL sub-branch, but the TPI Association, which is now based out at Walls End. Um, I have RSL sub-branches, uh, not just in Newcastle, but Waratah Mayfield, Merriweather Hamilton RS and Adamstown sub-branch, Stockton and Walls End, to name just a few. I'd also give tribute to Jerry Bailey, who uh, is one of a very active men's health peer group that look after each other. But I'd also want to uh, acknowledge partners of veterans 
and indeed the long-standing effort of Mrs Pat Cleggett, the former National Secretary from Newcastle. Thank you. I 